and today we're gonna talk about something that I thought that I'll never talk about which is AEW welcome to AEW talk to my AEW talk I'm gonna admit guys I'm not a huge AEW fan something is not clicking with me but every once in a while I go there and I see also uh, some recommendations are popping up on YouTube, so I'm kind of in touch what is going on with AW. But today I decided to watch the whole show because yesterday I told I told you that NXT was mid, so I decided to give AW a shot. The first thing that happened on the show was the Jericho Appreciation Society meeting where all of the members of Jericho Appreciation Society left no one appreciates Jericho now because apparently Don Callis invites him into his family and also last week uh, Jericho had a match with the Keshta versus his own people one thing that I started to appreciate in WWE more than in AEW is the fact that WWE is always putting on what happened last week, what happened before two weeks, what happened before three weeks and at the moment if you're watching WWE you're kind of annoyed with all of that but it kind of keeps the people who are not in touch informed what is going on right now I don't know why that match happened in the first place so basically that match happened uh, Don Callis helped Jericho win, Jericho won and everybody left Jericho Appreciation Society to be fair, that storyline is good uh, so far. For a long time, I didn't get the whole point of the Jericho Appreciation Society. Basically, this is, I think, his second stable in AEW. And I just don't get it, why you should have like 100,000 stables. But right now, the story goes in a good way. Um, I don't know if he's gonna join the family of Don Callis or not, but um, I'm looking forward to see what's gonna happen. After that, we had a match between the Hardys and the Young Bucks, and I don't know why. I've always kind of wanted to see that match. The Hardys are one of the all-time greats in my book. Uh, the Young Bucks uh, are one of the all-time greats in all of the books, except my book. And I, I kind of want to see that match. To be fair with you, at the end of the match I was kind of sad uh, because you can see that Hardys are getting old. It really pains me to say this. So because Jeff Hardy is one of my favorite wrestlers and at the end he just hopped into the top rope and he slipped up and he fell on his head and it was kind of sad it was I'm not even mad about it it is everything was very very good until the very last thing and I don't know man anyway but, but my whole point is that I don't have a point I don't know why that match happened uh, I guess uh, that match leads to Young Bucks versus FTR how Good question. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a fan of FTR. I'm not a fan of the Young Bucks. This match will happen at their next pay-per-view, which is All In in London. And I don't understand how this is gonna be the biggest wrestling event ever, but apparently it is. FTW Championship match. Jack Perry versus Rob Van Dam. And I'm gonna tell you this. I was watching that match. And I was like, oh, shit man, they brought one old legend and he is gonna flop and people are gonna start booing him and all of that shitty stuff. But he can still go, man. It was amazing. The best moment that I picked from uh, AEW Dynamite was from him. Oh, amazing performance. And I have a question. Is the FTW Championship the same thing as the Heritage Cup? for NXT. Basically a championship that has special rules that is some sort have some special twist and it's not officially officially a championship but it's kind of a championship. It kind of gives me, give me the same vibe and I kind of like it. After that we had an MJF and Adam Cole segment. Please don't break this tag team man. They're amazing. 
their top comedy act, but I think that Adam Cole just flipped up everything and it's because of Roddy Strong and man, I don't know what to say. It was a fun little segment, just before that segment we saw Adam Cole and uh, MJF being in a trampoline center, <laughs> MJF was playing, was playing dodgeball with the kids while throwing balls at their faces and it was fun man, it was, it is a good time and I'm really happy that the, their next pay-per-view they're gonna be at the main event. To be fair with you, Adam Cole is one of the reasons why I watch AEW, I'm telling you right now. No other wrestler that I'm looking forward more than Adam Cole in AEW, but I'm gonna talk about that in the outro later, I have a little bit of a thing that I want to talk about. Uh, Black Combat Club versus the Lucha Bros, John Moxley bled, uh, of course. Uh, that match will lead to Lucha uh, to the Dead Triangle versus the BCC. I don't understand what they're trying to achieve. I stopped following the BCC things a few months after Regal left. And at, and at this point, I don't understand, did Brian Danielson left? Why there are only three? Yeah, I'm a little bit confused and not interested. Lucha Bros are really cool. With Pac, they're becoming the Death Triangle. And it's a really cool twist for the Lucha Bros pack. I don't know what to expect really. Like, I, I don't know the storyline there, what is the history there, as long as I understood pa the BCC injured pack, and I guess that he's gonna come back the same way as Kenny came back like probably a year ago from an injury or something. Swerve Strickland is another superstar that is the reason why I give AEW a chance once in a while but the story that is happening right now is a little bit confusing. Uh, he has some sort of a faction himself, the Mogul Embassy. I like the idea but I think there are too many people there. As long as I understand this whole thing will lead to him versus Darby Allen, which is a match that I'm seriously looking forward to. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say. But as I said, I feel like the group is super big and in the group there is a guy who is freaking Samoan, I would assume, and he's barefoot and naked and this is not the vibe of the group and I don't know why he is there. And now the main event, Hiraku Shida, which is the champion versus Anna J. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, I haven't watched it. I was just not interested. Don't take it personal, please. Uh, as long as I understand Hiraku Shida retained and there is gonna be a tournament that is gonna determine who is gonna be the next person in line. And usually when there is a there is that kind of tournament in place already, the champion is gonna stay the same. That that is the reason why I skipped the match because I knew that uh, she's gonna retain anyway. And I don't know any of these two ladies, and that leads me to the end of the video. It's really hard to watch NXT and AEW, especially when the, all the superstars are super young into their careers, super early. And the only reason you actually watch is because of people like the likes of Adam Cole, uh, Rob Van Dam, Swerve Strickland, Jericho, the Hardys. Some people hate of the fact that uh, people are not giving credit to AEW people as much as WWE people, but the WWE people are bringing a lot more eyes than the AEW people. And Wrestling is a cool thing, don't get me wrong, but you cannot have a good wrestling promotion if you don't have that connection with the fans. And that connection with the fans is built with time, with a lot of time. Like, uh, think about The Undertaker, 30 years in the business. Think about Edge, 25 years in the business. Triple H, uh, 25 years in the business. Shawn Michaels, a lot of years in the business. And all of these guys, at the beginning, no one was even looking at them. And wrestling is not about how many stunts you perform or even what story will tell but the bond you will build with the fans. For example, the thing that is happening with MJF now, 
we were seeing him from the beginning, week to week, every week and at the beginning he was a bad guy right now the whole shtick with Adam Cole he's becoming a good guy but this is all in the span of four years and after four years for me it kinda starts to click in finally and start to caring about that that guy you know but it, it's because he's consistent I'm watching not not because he's the biggest star in AEW. Right now, I cannot think of any other AEW superstar, except maybe Darby Allen, that is the same caliber as MJF, that is super consistent, week to week. I'm gonna keep an eye on AEW, and I'm talking all of the AEW. AEW Dynamite, AEW Collision, AEW Rampage. I'm gonna keep track on all three of them, I don't guarantee that I'm gonna make videos for all, for all three of them because if I start making videos for them I should make like six wrestling videos per week plus the show it's gonna be insane so I'm not gonna put that pressure on myself but you have my word when something interesting happened when there is some heat going on I'm gonna cover it I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about it and I want to hear your opinions your theories I want to think about future storylines, future bookings, and let's theory craft together everyone. Because this is why I'm doing this, because it's fun. And it's fun to express my thoughts, it's fun to express my feelings, and I'm looking forward to hear your thoughts and feelings. Thank you so much for watching, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Peace.